Certainly glad you could join us today. That's just fantastic. We have instructors that travel all over the country. Spray the joy of painting. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. Hi there, I'm Nicholas Hankins. Welcome back to the painting studio. I'm so glad you could join me for a demonstration of the Bob Ross wet on wet painting technique. I have a little wooded scene in mind, maybe a sunset out in the woods on the lake. And as you caught me, I'm just putting some liquid white on the canvas. I have an 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched double prime canvas. And I'm using the two inch brush to spread around my liquid white. You know, I thought normally you don't get to see Bob do this on his show. So I wanted to show you how to do it and talk a little bit about it if we can get that first step right. Bob's painting technique is so much fun and it's so easy, but it's, it's very predicated upon the proper application of the liquid white. So let's take a moment to discuss it. As you can see up here, I've got most of this canvas covered except for a small area here. And I don't know if it registers on the camera. Hopefully it does. The canvas is toned, just a very, very light gray. That's sort of a unique thing to Bob's canvas. They were made that way specifically for this purpose. So you can see where you have liquid white and where you don't. I like to spread the liquid white around just kind of in a dot, dot, dot pattern. And once it's distributed, I come back with my two inch brush and I just really push it in there and spread it around with little crisscross strokes or sometimes I call them figure of eight strokes because I put the end of my brush into the canvas, the tips of the bristles, and then I never really pick it back up. I just make little figures of eight. It's a very efficient, fast way to put the paint on the canvas. Works pretty well. It's also nice for blending too. So I do some vertical strokes, horizontal strokes, just to, just to even it out. Then you can always take a little fingerprint test to ensure that you have just the right amount of liquid white. If you've done this properly, you'll be able to see all the little grooves in your fingerprint without them all being filled in with paint. So that's an indication that we have just the right amount of paint. Of course, you have to remember to wipe your finger off. All right, so let's grab the old palette and we'll get started. Just leaving a little bit of that liquid white in the brush, let's come down here and pick up some Indian yellow. That would be a nice warm color to begin with. Pull a little out on the palette, tap it into the brush. All right, let's come up here, just, just up in the middle of the sky somewhere. I'm gonna use a little, little crisscross stroke, figure of eight. We'll spread a nice warm glow through the center of the sky there. Something like such. Now, automatically you'll notice, of course, because of that wonderful liquid white that our color just gets softer, lighter, spreads out, spreads away. Gentler, gentler, gentler as you go. Let's see, next let's pick up just a little touch, a little touch, a little touch of bright red. Same dirty brush. We'll come back up here. And a little bright red goes in on top of that. And where the two mix together, where they touch, you'll just wind up with a nice sort of a, sort of a peachy color, coral color. That's pretty, pretty for sunsets. I'm envisioning some some water out here on a lake or a river or something. So I just want to automatically go ahead and add it into the water with a nice level stroke. Coming from the outside edge, sweep in, just like that. All right, continuing on upward, let's pick up some alizarin crimson. It's a cooler red, cooler than that bright red but still a warm color. It's interesting, isn't it? A cool, warm color. There is such a thing. There's our crimson. We'll add that just above the bright red.
going to wind up being quite a bright sky, but that's all right. Sunset should be bright. Pick up a little more of that crimson. Let's come down here in the water. Again, I'm applying some pressure to the outside edge of the canvas and then just sweeping inward. Outside edge and sweep inward. If we're living right here, we're going to wind up with just a just a little light sheen right through the center there where our brush lifts up and off the canvas. A little more of that same crimson. I want to go just a, just a fuzz darker up here. It's a very specific unit of painting measurement, a fuzz. How many fuzzes until it turns dark? Don't know, we'll just have to find out. I'm adding a little phthalo blue to my, my same dirty brush. I'm just going to brush mix a little crimson and phthalo blue. Lizard and crimson and phthalo blue. Tap it into the brush. Let's come up to the corners. Work this down darker in the corners and then work our way down, down, down. Mix and blend with liquid white and get lighter and lighter and softer and softer. That's just what we want to have happen. All right, some of that same color in the water. Once more, I'm going to pick up some, some phthalo blue, maybe perhaps a little more phthalo blue this time, maybe even a little touch of the phthalo green. Since this is in the water, we can afford to have a little green tint. Start from the outside edge and work our way in. Now my objective here is not to cover up all of this nice warm color that I've already laid in. Just sort of want to surround it. I want to frame it with some dark. There we go. Maybe just a touch darker down in the very bottom left corner. This comes out looking like I'm picturing it in my mind. This will need to be just a little deeper, deeper, darker right there. Yeah, something like that. All right, let's wash a brush. Be sure you're washing your brushes in odorless paint thinner. Don't use soap and water. Bob's brushes don't like soap and water. The Bob Ross odorless thinner works just great. We'll shake out the excess. Give her a bash and we're on our way. All right, we'll dry that off. Tell you what, let me grab a little, grab a little one inch brush. I'm going to pick up some titanium white. A little titanium white. Now, this isn't going to show very much right now, but you stick around and wait. You'll see a difference. I'm going to use a little titanium white, go right into the center, and just add a little extra bright spot right there. That's not going to look like much right now. But as we work and work and work out and add a few darker colors, just watch that little spot come to life. It will glow. It will eventually glow. All right, now with a clean dry brush, we can blend our way outward from light into the dark. And that is always and forever a one-way street. From light to dark is a one-way street. In the water, I'm going to go all the way across, but very, very gently. And again, I'm going to work from light down to dark. All right. Let's pick up a fan brush and we'll play with some clouds today. Perhaps, perhaps, what should we start with? Let's use a little titanium white. Just grab a little on my fan brush and I'm going to move it over here into the center of the palette. And I'm going to add a little alizarin crimson. Well, let's mix them a little. Maybe some crimson and bright red. There we go. I'll make some little stringy clouds. 
little stringy clouds that just live far, far, far away. And the motion I'm making is very much, it's kind of a, I guess you'd call it a cradle stroke. That's very exaggerated. It's not quite that curved and it's not quite that big. But that's what I'm doing, basically. Then I'm just kind of letting the brush wander around. Just, just allowing it to zig and zag. Sometimes I'm catching a little more crimson. Sometimes I'm catching a little more bright red. Sometimes it seems a little darker. Sometimes it seems a little lighter. Variety's the key here. In other words, I'm just, I'm not too worried about everything being nice and uniform and mixed together perfectly. I just want to, just want to get up here and have a good time. <laughs> That's what painting's about. Getting up to the canvas and having a good time. I'm glad you're here to have a good time with me. It's always more fun when you're here. There we go, just kind of let this drift wherever it wants to go. Okay, how about, how about, let's alter that color just a bit. Let's add a little phthalo blue and a little more crimson. Turn it into more of a reddish lavender color. Let's get a little darker and let's keep going. I don't want to get too crazy with this, especially not down low. Just a little hint, almost as if some of these clouds are a little, a little more shadowed than some of the others. A little more water vapor in just a few of them. They're a little thicker. And as we work our way up, we can think about going just a little darker, perhaps a little more blue. And even this color can vary just a little. Sometimes I'm taking a bit more crimson, sometimes I'm taking a bit more blue. Just a, just a crazy sky full of clouds. We work our way on up. Maybe let's let's try using the brush a little different way. Maybe we kind of drop in here and we just sort of push a corner into it and we get a little messy and we get a little spotty and we get a little crazy and maybe we don't even look at the canvas for just a minute. It's kind of scary, isn't it? But do it. It'll make you paint really natural, loose clouds that don't have too much of a pattern to them. It's sort of nice. It's sort of nice. Kind of let your brush go crazy. Yeah, I know. Hankins has a mess going here, but let's see if we can make something out of it yet. Maybe we get real nice and dark at the top. I'm even picking up just a little Prussian blue now. Throwing it in there with it. So we got all sorts of stuff happening in that sky. All right, that's enough of a mess. Now let's bring in the cleanup crew and see what happens. Let's use our two inch brush. I'm gonna start again in the light area. Blend some of these clouds out and around and away. Just kind of following those, some of those general lines that we've introduced in there. Now let's just graze over some of this stuff that we smacked in there with the corner of the fan brush a little thoughtlessly. Sometimes you might want to push a little harder. Sometimes you, you just grace across it very softly. Some parts stay a little more distinct. Some parts get a little softer and lighter and looser just so we have a, just so we have a nice variety of things going on. 
certainly changes the look. I love to work that way. And you can decide you might be happy with it just like that. You might want to come back and doctor it a little bit and add some more. I think I want to add just a little more maybe. Where, where, where? Maybe right in here. Just feel like I want to hook this part to that part a little more. There we go. When you've got that brush in your hand, you're the orchestra leader, you're the go-getter. You get to decide. That's what you call a major decision. And we just made one. We'll make some more in a minute. All right, let me gather up. Let me gather up all this color and get it out of the way. Nope, on second thought, let's don't get it out of the way. <laughs> let's take some of this, some of this garbage, this palette garbage I have here. Let's use it. Let's use it. This is just mostly, it's that lavender color. It's got both blues, some crimson and white. I'm going to mix all of that together. I'm going to add a little more white to it. And let's add some more phthalo green to this. Just looking for a far away color, maybe for a few little trees in the distance. I think I want just a touch of black in there also. I'm going to gray it down and darken it a touch. That's just some of my leftover sky color. And I've added a little, a little more white, a little more phthalo green, and a touch more midnight black. All right, let's see what that looks like. We'll try it out and see what it looks like. Find a fan brush here, it's clean. This is a number six fan brush somewhat small or uh, larger what larger than that one I was using in the sky that little one in the sky was a number three fan brush this is a number six so let's drop in here this is eh, maybe just a little below halfway I'm going to take the top corner of the brush I'm just going to pitch it up in the air a bit and then tap it into the canvas and let it just sort of crash downward Tap and crash. We'll have some little tap and crash trees. And I'm just letting my arm kind of work up and down, back and forth. A lot of variety in this. Don't want to make them all the same height. That's, that's the main thing I'm worried about when I'm making little tap and crash trees. I just want to ensure that they're not all the same height. That'll look like a perfectly sculpted little hedge or a perfectly sculpted little ornamental garden back there. And that's, that's not what this is. This is out in the wild. We're going into the wild here. There we go. Some of these trees are a little taller, some are a little shorter, some are a little darker, some are a little lighter, some have a sharper top, some have more of a blunt top, and it's all good. So long as there's variety. Okay, go back to that old two inch brush again. Still haven't cleaned this since our initial wash there. I'm just kind of trucking right on through. We'll have to stop and clean it eventually. Just gonna grab this and pull it straight down. Pull some of that color straight down into the water. Just grabbing the bottom of those trees and pulling them straight down. You can wipe off the excess on a paper towel or knock it on the easel leg just to blend out the excess. Pretty good little start there. You wipe the knife. I'm gonna pick up just a touch of titanium white. Little touch of dark sienna with that. And coming right back to you here, I'm gonna add a little touch of liquid white into that mixture. Mix that all together. 
cut it out very flat, push it out very flat on your palette, or even spin it around and mash it out flat. And we'll cut across and pick up a very small, minute little roll of paint. I'm gonna come right up here and push that very firmly into the canvas. Use a lot of pressure, basically. I just try to pretend that I'm trying to cut a hole right, right through the fabric. It's very important here is to keep your knife level. I don't want it to dip this way or dip that way. Even if your land is doing that, keep your knife level and work, work your way down that slope in little stair steps. That's important. If it goes, if your water line goes that way, it'll look weird, I promise. <laughs> You've heard Bob say it'll look like you have to tie a bucket on the side to catch all the water running out. That's, that's the appearance it takes on. It's a little strange. Tell you what, we've got that we've got that mother color going. It's just all this stuff working together. Let's let's keep adding to it. Let's add some more midnight black and some more Van Dyke brown. And I beefed up the phthalo green as well. So same color. Another shot of midnight black. Added some Van Dyke brown and a little more phthalo green. I'm gonna I'm gonna double I'm gonna double the dose of phthalo green and midnight black. I want to be noticeably darker than what I have up here already. Let's see if we are. Let's see if we are. If not, we can always add a little more. We can adjust as we go. Now I want to have some. <laughs> Where do I want them to live? Maybe right there. Let's try that. All right. Using just the corner of the brush. Going to drop in a few little spruce trees. I feel like that could be just a touch darker. So I'm going to make his, his neighbor and all future neighbors just a little darker by adding some more green, black, and Van Dyke brown. Yeah, I like that better. All right. Now these trees are the same type of trees as those trees. They're just a little closer to us, that's all. I'm using just the corner of the brush to begin. As I work my way down the tree, I, I continue to use the corner of the brush, but I don't change the position. In other words, you won't see my brush doing this. I just drop the handle down, keep it on this side, and I just mash that corner down more and more and more as I work my way down the tree. It's an effective way to paint little little evergreens. Works well for these trees that have the little branches that hang down. Some, some evergreens have branches that go up and you can paint them basically the same way. The only difference is if you'd raise your handle up as opposed to turning it down. So both ways, both ways work. And I like both types of trees. I'm just, I'm a little, I'm a little partial to the hangy down trees as opposed to the pushy up trees. I reckon that is the technical, technical term for those. The hangy downs and pushy ups. Maybe there are a few closer tap and crash trees here. They're kind of midway between those and these, these and they. And all points in between. Let's see.
just filling up a nice big area here with these little trees. This is good, really good tree practice. Really good chance to get in here and practice these things. Something everybody seems to enjoy when I teach a class. Everybody enjoys a chance to practice these little trees. And it's nice when you have a big bunch of them like this because if something goes wrong, you can just cover it up. You can, you can add a little friend in there and everything's fine again. There we go. Bunches and bunches and bunches of them. Maybe we'll just kind of wind him down there a little. <laughs> I feel like this one needs a, another tall friend right there. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't quite fill the bill on the first trip through. Yeah, that's better. All right, down in the water. Yeah, these would show up down in the water. So let's go ahead and pop a little color down here. I'm just gonna kind of loosely mirror those shapes. very loosely mirror. <laughs> you don't have to be too careful in the water, thank goodness. Now, just going to grab this brush, take, take some of that paint, pull it straight down, straight down, straight down, straight down, straight down like that. Wipe off the excess as you go. It'll help you out. Straight down, then brush across, gently across, very lightly, very lightly. Got that brush in my hand. Let's just let's carry on with it. Pick up a little more black and brown, maybe a little sap green now. Change the flavor just slightly now that we're out of the trees. Let's go down here and plant a little grass beneath them so they've got something to stand on. We need a nice little patch of land for these trees to stand on. And it's gonna come around around the cove there. I know this, this won't look like much just yet, but it will. Right now, I just want all this dark, just nice and dark. And we'll carve something out of it in just a minute. There we go. Okay, let's take just a little bit of that color. It's a little different, so let's go ahead and pull some down into the water. Brush gently across. That's probably more safely done with a clean, dry brush. I'm just living on the edge there with that dirty one. Take it, wash a brush at home and dry it. <laughs> Don't take chances. Don't do it just because I'm doing it. I don't want to be a bad influence for you. Okay. Let's come back in here. I'm just going to take a clean palette knife now, hold it straight into the canvas, kind of saw up some little, some little tree trunks. We can even sort of fake a few in here just by, just by kind of plowing it through that existing paint. There we go. Looks like you have many, many more treetops back there than you actually do, than we actually painted. That's a good way to cheat it just a little bit. Right. Let's use a little touch of Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna and a little titanium white. A little more titanium white. There we go. Just going to mix that to a very marbled appearance. Cut off a tiny little roll of paint and let's come up here and add just just a little indication here and there. Maybe it maybe it will show, maybe it won't. Just a little touch of a tree trunk here and there. And we'll go back to our same dirty fan brush we were using to place those trees in there. I'm just going to wipe some of the excess off. And I'll pick up a little touch of liquid white on that, on that same brush. And let's pick up, let's try some Indian yellow and yellow ochre. 
just mix those together. Makes a nice warm, almost a golden sort of yellow. That little touch of green in the brush just, just alters it enough that we can put some sort of sparkly sunset highlights on these little trees. Be very careful not to cover all of your dark though. That's probably number one. Number one concern right now is don't cover all that dark. Just a little touch here and there and there and here. And don't be afraid to don't be afraid to cross that little tree trunk. Just go right across it. There we go. Going back to my little one inch brush that I used in the sky earlier, it has it has already a a bit of light color in it. So let's let's just go right into some yellow ochre, cad yellow, little touch of sap green maybe. Just brush mix all those. Let a little touch of sparkle out here on this piece of land. It's extending outward. Loading a little color in both sides of the brush and then I just give it a little push push and push up that little ridge of paint and we'll carry on. Allow it to get a little darker, a little darker and a little darker. And as I'm tapping, I'm always thinking about the shape or the angles that live in the land out here. It's going to be sloping down to the water. So I want to make sure I turn my brush that way. If we, if we just tapped flat, it would look like it came out and just dropped down and there, there wouldn't be much of a reason for there to be water here. We need to, we need to kind of show that this land is tipping down and turning down toward the water. Get some nice variety in there. Maybe a little touch of the phthalo green thrown in once in a while. Especially in the shadows, that's pretty in the shadows where it's nice and cool. Your green would be a very nice cool color. Yeah, there we go. Let's see, let's see. Maybe we see a little touch of that in the water. I've, che I've cheated long enough. Let's wash a brush. <laughs> Tried to drag a little more out of it, but I can't do it anymore. So we'll wash one out. All right, shake out the excess. There we go. Beat the devil out of it. Okay, so let's come back. Just catch a little touch of that lighter color in our reflection. It's kind of a multi, multi-layered reflection now. That's sort of cool. I like that. Like that quite a bit. We need a little piece of land or some dirt, some soil. I shouldn't call it dirt. Dirt's what lives under your refrigerator. This is soil. That's much better. That's much better. I'm just using a little Van Dyke brown. I think I picked up a little midnight black there. Anything dark, really. You could even add a little. You could even add a little dark sienna to that mixture, and it would be fine. Just something dark. Nice heavy paint and very dark. Heavy paint. I say heavy paint. I'm saying thick paint. Thick dry paint doesn't have to be on there real heavy but I do want to create the look that this is sort of coming out toward us a little bit. Then I can use some of that nice white and Van Dyke brown and dark sienna mixture that I made earlier for my tree trunks. Cut off that little roll of paint once more. And I'll add just a little touch of highlight to this. I'm going to hold my knife very gently. Sometimes I hold it so gently I drop it.
that's a thing that happens pretty frequently in class when we're doing a little knife work or maybe we're painting a mountain. You painted mountains with me or with Bob, then you know what a nice light touch that takes. But oftentimes when people, when it finally clicks and people get it and it starts working for them, just a few strokes later, I'll hear their knife hit the floor and I know they're holding their knife lightly enough. They, they'll let out a big gasp and I'll hear a ting and the knife goes down to the floor and I say, that's good. You're just about to master it. You have to drop your knife. If you have to take it back too much, too much the other way to figure out how to do it right, that's always a good way to learn. I recommend that. I call that the Goldilocks approach. You have to feel what's wrong in one direction, what's wrong in the other direction to find the, the right in the middle. You have to, have to hit it too hard or too soft to know when you're doing it just right. It's a good approach. Just letting a little bit of my grass kind of grow down over my, over my land there. Forever running out of room. I mix so many different colors. How about, let me flatten out a little titanium white. Cut off a little roll. I'm going to come back here and just begin to find, just going to begin to find a few little, I want to have the look of, a lot of little rapids, a lot of little ripples on the water. So I'm just using pure titanium white. I'm just kind of touch, 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 touching. Back here, I want to see a lot of little ripples around that shoreline. I don't want to cover all of the dark, mind you. Just want to see all sorts of little ripples going on back there. Oh, you know what? This would be a good spot. This would be a good spot to have some little rocks that live out there in the water. Let's mix up a little white, a little white and dark sienna. Maybe a little touch of midnight black. White and dark sienna and midnight black. And a little liquid white. I just reached into the can there with my knife blade and picked up some liquid white. I want to soften this color down until it's about the consistency of ketchup or mustard, some kind of condiment, whipped cream. Even add a little touch of paint thinner in there if you wanted, but just, just a little bit of paint thinner. You don't want to get too much. All right. Let's pick up a handy dandy filbert brush that works great for making little rocks let's load it full of midnight black and van dyke brown just load it nice and full on both sides and then i'm going to pull one side and one side only through that light color so i have dark on one side light on the other side and i'm going to turn the light side of the brush up to face the sky here so let's come out in the water. We'll just create a few little rocks that live out here with that nice dark color. Some of these rocks are big, some are small, some are in between, some are nestled up against the shoreline, some are hanging out in the water. Just wanted to get these in here before I got too crazy with the, the little ripples because I want to cut some little ripples and little rapids around those rocks. That would be kind of nice. Feels like this might be out in Colorado somewhere. Maybe in Idaho. Feels like it's out west somewhere. But holding that brush very much on its side, just give it a little push and slide over. There's a little one right there, a couple little ones right there. Just a nice little, just a nice little gathering of rocks. That probably, that probably even has a technical name, a gathering of rocks. It's probably called some crazy, some crazy name. I think a whole group of trees is called a copse. This 
school teacher friend of mine told me that. Wonder if there's a, wonder if there's a name for a big grouping of rocks. Somebody's probably already Googled it and put it down in the comments. If you do that, let me know. <laughs> I want to know what a big group of rocks is called. Let me pick up a, <clears throat> I'm going to pick up a clean, dry one inch brush. Just brush across. I'm just sort of pulling a little reflection down in the, the water from my rocks. I have to do that kind of carefully. We have to sort of weave in and out here. It's, it's a little bit of work, but it's worth it. Now, let's take, we can even take our little small palette knife, our little number five knife. Load up a little roll of paint on that knife. This is the little five knife with some titanium white. We can cut into some of these little tight areas a little better, a little more accurately. There we go. Always keeping your knife blade level. Just going to let that come up around and hug the stone. There we go. Now what I'm doing is touching. I'm just picking up a little roll of paint. Go right up there, hold the knife blade flat, and just touch, 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 touch. You can have some nice bright Nice bright glints of light playing on the water that way. Maybe a little, let a few of them kind of hang around the corner there. Just sort of peek around the corner. Some of those may appear a little too strong to you if they do. We'll take our little one inch brush. I'm just going to graze very, very gently across this. Very gently across this. I don't want to, I don't want to destroy it or disturb it very much. I just kind of want to diffuse it. I just want to diffuse it, knock some of that texture down. <laughs> Got to be careful around those rocks. I'm really just using, if, if reality is known, I'm not using the entire brush to do that. I'm just tilting it in so only, only a little corner of the brush touches. So that way I still have a lot of nice soft hairs touching the canvas, but it's just, it's just a corner of the brush. It's just a few. Of that entire brush, I'm using 7.8% of the hair. Yeah, give it, give or take a little, somewhere thereabouts. I really don't do a lot of measurement or a lot of exact stuff when I'm painting. I just try to get it close. But if I were guessing, I would say that's about 7.8% of that brush. All right. Let me go back to my other little brush, and I'm going to use 100% of it. <laughs> I'm going to load 100% of it. With a little liquid white, this was my brush. I was making some little grasses on the, the land back there. I'm going to go back into some liquid white. More cad yellow, maybe a, a touch more Indian yellow. and Push up some very, very bright color. And let's come back in here and create a few little, maybe there are just a few little deciduous trees that kind of hang out of these really, really dark spots back here. They're just sort of peeking out in between the, all those evergreens, all those little spruce trees. Loading the brush up, really pushing up a nice little ridge of paint. This is my, this is my tap and turn idea. Just kind of tap the brush and each time you tap it, you turn it a little bit so the foliage appears to sort of hang out and hang down and cascade down and over. Makes a nice effect. Makes it feel like there's a lot of heavy branches and limbs hanging out there. 
You can even take your knife and scratch in a few little sticks and twigs and branches and limbs and trunks and etc. Just a few things standing up back there showing. All right, let's grab a two inch brush. I'm gonna mix up a big batch of dark color now. Just remove some of these things out of the way. Clean up a little spot on my palette to work. And let's mix up a big bunch of black and Van Dyke brown and Prussian blue and alizarin crimson and sap green. Just all those dark colors. All those dark colors. Mix them together. This should basically just look black on your palette. Nice and dark. Now let's let's load the big two inch brush full of that color and tap and give it a little push. I'm going to push up that same little ridge of paint that I was talking about on the one inch brush. We're going to punch it up there on the two inch brush and let's come up here and get brave. Let's get real brave. I've got quite a big tree hanging out up here. Just using the corner of the brush and I'm still doing my tap and turn, tap and turn, tap and turn, tap and turn. And tap and turn and tap and turn. <laughs> Lots of paint, very, very dark. Reload as frequently as you need to. Maybe this hangs out here in front of that in front of that nice light area. See, I promised you that would look brighter. I promised you if you hung around long enough, that would look brighter. It just has to be framed a little bit. It's worth taking that extra minute to pop it in there early, early on though. Just have to remember to do it. Let's work our way on down here. I'm also paying very close attention to the, to the shape of the branches. I want to be sure that I'm leaving some nice little open areas in between these branches for birds to fly through there. And I told one of my classes once I'd like to, like to think I left enough room for maybe my golf ball to fly through there, although my golf balls usually find the smallest branch. They're pretty good at that. I've always heard trees are 90% air, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> they never seem to be when I'm playing golf. There we go. All right. Let's let a little, little, bit, of, little bit of something kind of hang out over the water here. Maybe it just kind of comes on down, on down, on down. Maybe to right about there. It's all just going to be filled in nice and dark, so that's fine. Let's pull a little, pull a little of that dark color into the reflection, something like so. Ooh, I've got a good use for my filbert brush here. I haven't cleaned it yet, and that paid off. <laughs> Glad I left it dirty. Let's come up here and have. I'm going to turn the light edge of the brush now to face the left side of the canvas. So I have the dark on the right side, the light on the left side, and let's just create using that double loaded brush, little tree trunk slides right down. Maybe, maybe there's another one that hangs out here. Yeah. That way we get our dark and our highlight all at one time. What could be simpler? <laughs> There we go. There we go. Maybe he's got a little arm that crosses over, connects right there. Something like that. Maybe there's another little arm there. We might even we might even take our little might even take our little lighter brush. I'll tell you something that's nice. Is to take a little a little liquid black. Put it out on your palette. I'm just reaching for a little bit of the liquid black 
A little touch of paint thinner. Liquid black is great if you want to add a few little branches because it's so nice and dark. And it's already a little bit on the thin side. It makes great little branches in your trees. It's nice to even go back and darken the, darken the shadowed side of your tree up occasionally if you, need it, if you need to beef it up a little bit. Liquid black's a good option for that. Works really, really well. A lot of, a lot of people in classes tell me they, they didn't see Bob use liquid black very often and they're not, they're not sure what to do with it. Sometimes they'll buy a can of it or it'll come, come from a loved one as a gift or something. They say, I've got a can of that liquid black and I don't know what to do with it. There's a lot you can do with it. I'm going to try to show you a few more things. As time goes by, it's one of my favorite things to use. There we go. A few little sticks and twigs and branches and limbs and etc. etc. While we're sailing along with our liquid black and liner brush combo, it's working so well. There we go. All right. Go back and find my little one-inch brush here that's cooking along. It's got my light color in it. I'm going to add some more of just a combination of all three of the yellows, make a nice bright color. Tap, tap, tap that brush in there and push up my little ridge of paint. Let's come up here and we'll find some bright little highlights out here on the edges. Lots of paint, lots of paint and a light touch. Lots of paint and a light touch. Important now that you don't cover up all of that dark. Have to have dark to show the light. If you have any trouble making this paint stick, add a little bit of the liquid white because we know a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. In fact, I'm going to do that right now just as a little insurance. Yeah, jumps off there so much more easily. tapping and turning and cascading and just creating lots of little lots of little areas in here and have all kinds of foliage hanging out and hanging down hanging over hanging over the edge of the, the edge of the bank looking at the river hanging over the edge of the ledge there we go it's important to cross over those those little trunks and branches and sticks and twigs and stuff though. Sort of sets them down in the center of the tree, right where they need to be. There we go. Lots of paint and a light, light touch. I think the further down I go here, I'm going to add maybe just a little touch of my phthalo blue and make it a nice deep, deep, cool green. I feel like it's getting down into the shadows just a little more down here cooler, cooler shadows farther away. And we can round it off a little bit that way. I'm going to turn my brush and load it in one direction. Just hold the brush straight into the palette like that and load it in one direction. Then you'll see a little bush forming on your palette. So it's a nice little way to kind of predetermine what you're going to do. And then I'll turn that rounded corner up toward the top. We'll drop in some little bushes that live down here, right along the edge of the, the edge of the river, bank of the river, or lake. I don't know that we ever properly decided what this was going to be. Don't know that it matters. Let me show you something. Let me show you something fun. Let me show you something fun. Bob does this, I think, a couple of times at least. I saw him do this, and I think it's just so neat. It's one of my favorite little techniques that I took away from the show. Let's take, let's take some black, take the rest of that brown, a little blue. Shoot, I'll even throw a little dark sienna in there. Doesn't much matter. Maybe even, maybe even crimson. If it's dark, it's game. I'm going to stay away from the greens, though. I want this to be kind of a, kind of a deep, rich, dark 
grayish, bluish, violet color. I need quite a bit of it. Okay, get some of that on the palette. Now, I have a little bit of rock highlight color left, but I need some more, so I'm going to pick up some more titanium white, a little bit of that sienna, and I'm going to add to that quite a bit of liquid white. There we go. Quite a bit of that liquid white. I didn't use a little bit of that rock color I just mixed up, gray it down. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. That's quite a bit of paint there too. Now, let's pick up, let's pick up, I'm gonna dip it into some paint thinner and shake it out. I'm gonna pick up a little oval brush. And I dipped it into my, my paint thinner bucket, shook it out, I'm gonna fill it full of this dark, super dark color on both sides. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay the brush down and wiggle it pull it through that paint, and then pull it to a chiseled edge. So even this big brush will form to a chiseled edge. So I'm pulling it through the paint, wiggle it, wiggle it, pull it out, and I'm gonna pull one side through that light color. This thing's just like a big old filbert, basically. So we can take it from the side, just like we did with our little filbert brush, and make big rocks if we want. I think they're fun. I think these are great fun. I'm gonna leave it up to you. So you can make really big rocks with that. And then maybe we add, maybe we add a couple of baby rocks down here out at the, out at the edge. It's a whole little rock family. <laughs> All right. Let's plant some little bushes around those rocks. Set them down into the ground, into the painting. Stick a few little highlights in between there. Like there's stuff growing out. Maybe that's moss growing out on the rock. Who knows? Something like that. Down here in the foreground. Go back to my back to my dark tree color. I can even use some of that old that old rock color I just mixed up. Use my two inch brush here. We'll add a few little things in the corner, a few little bushes and weeds and etc. fan brush again. I'm going to be real careful and just sneak some of that color down into the water for a little rock reflection right there. Just so we see a little, little touch of those shimmering into the water. Wipe off my knife. Pick up a little touch of liquid white, a little touch of titanium white. Just mix them together there. We've got a few little ripples that live down here. Again, holding the knife very, very flat. Sometimes I even use that little edge of the knife if I'm in a, if I'm in a real tight area. If you're ever in a tight spot, just, just use the small edge of your knife. There we go. Need a couple of highlights on our closer bushes and bushes and weeds and reeds and limbs and branches. All these little things growing down here. There we go. Maybe we even maybe we can get a little touch of bright red in there. <laughs> so we're getting close to the center there. Scratch in a little stick and a twig. And I think we'll call that one finished. Hope you enjoyed our little trip out into the woods on the Sunset Lake. And thank you for joining me. I hope to see you again soon. Happy painting.
Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and please subscribe for more Bob Ross related content.